Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the Playmates, Toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie figures. We're having a look today at the Shredder. Shredder comes packaged in the same back card as the other turtles toys though again a no a no turtle or no uh, character is provided down below uh, he is the villain obviously the villain of the movie but we're not quite certain though what role he plays we know at some point from looking at the trailer that uh, Rokosaki or the equivalent of Rokosaki is in the movie and that they have taken his armor, the Shredder suit, and they've given it an upgrade. Now, clearly, though, in this the figure form, it definitely looks like he is a human wearing the suit. Although in the trailer, what we've seen so far, kind of looks like they're fighting more a giant robot of the Shredder. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that's going to play out. On the back of the package... The Turtles toys featured on the back there are the basic line of figures. There's Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, then down below, Splinter, April O'Neil, the Shredder, and Foot Soldier. They were born in shadow, they live in shadow, and fight in shadow, New York City. Crime rates are on a rise, and innocent civilians tremble in fear. But there's a force fighting back. Vigilantes among us, ready to protect the city. Are they the heroes we expect them to be? And are they powerful enough to take down the masked warrior? Everyone fears the Shredder. To check out more Turtles toys, you can head over to www.playmatestoys.com. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Shredder. There's more heading way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Upon getting the Shredder out of packaging, the one thing that will be as a separate piece is his cape. And there's a really a metal look to the overall design of this particular Shredder versus the other Shredders. Yes, of course, the Shredder still has his blades and everything else you would come to expect. But this one definitely has a more... I want to say industrial look to him versus, uh, you know, a more human looking design of him in other movies and other uh, uh, media uh, releases of Shredder. But he does have a cape. And the reason why I mention that is um, it, like it has a, a more kind of chain link, like chain mail design to it, which is really, really neat. It's also got like a serrated blade edge on either side there. But you can take the cape. Let me take Shredder here. Little two peg holes on the back there. The the cape very easily just pegs into place. Just plug it in there and plug it in there. And uh, you've got Shredder with his cape on. I think I like it a little more with the cape because it just kind of gives him a little more mass. Especially looking at it from the front, it gives him a little more mass. The interesting thing about the Shredder, though, and big, again, because we haven't seen the movie just yet, unless you got into your time machine and you traveled ahead of time, and if you did, please don't spoil it. I, I really wouldn't like if you spoiled the movie for me. Um, but the interesting thing about the movie is, so far from what we've seen with the Shredder, it looks like, again, the turtles are fighting a giant, either a cyborg or just a giant robot, just a big, a big giant Shredder robot. Why I mention that, though, is because the figure is released here, you can clearly see he's got more human elements to him than he does, at least from what we've seen in the movie. I'm wondering if maybe Playmates didn't want to give away uh, plot aspects in the movie, so they gave us a human version of Shredder, but maybe in the movie he's going to be, again, just all robotic. Fingers crossed, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, as we get more sequels of the new Turtles property, maybe, you know, Oroko Saki will take the mantle back of the Shredder and he'll, he'll come back in his Shredder form. So, again, a lot of this is just speculation. Spot doesn't know quite yet what's going to be happening in the movie, but the Shredder definitely looks a little more like a giant robot than human. Um, furthermore, though, if we move closer to Shredder's face there's definitely a recessed look to his eyes. 
And I'm again wondering if it's because Shredder is a robot in the movie that he doesn't actually have an indication of eyes. It almost looks as if the plan was to have this toy maybe light up at one point and the eyes would glow. I'm not quite certain. But because there are no eyes, again, gotta wonder, is he really going to be human in the movie or is he just going to be a giant mechanized Shredder? Uh, some really nice details on Shredder. Now, he is mostly just this one silver color, and he's got kind of got like two variations of the silver. He's got a darker gray silver uh, in the torso, the legs, and, uh, you know, most aspects to the arm. But then he's got this, this shinier silver making up the front cloth area here, and then adorning the, say, like the tops, for example, of his head. And uh, I, I think it, it works. It really works that especially they used different coloring. Just peg the cape back in here. Uh, because they used different coloring, it breaks it up. If it was all just one singular gray, I don't think it would have as much, um, a much appeal to it. But I really like the design of the shredder here. Uh, he definitely takes the aspect of the shredder and takes it to the next level because he's got all these extra blades here, blades in the front, he's got little blades on his gauntlets here, and then he's got these really long blades that we see in the movie, which, if I'm not mistaken, I think at one point he throws them in the movie and the blades are going in the air towards, like, Splinter. So, again, it's really going to be interesting to see how they, they're going to do this in the movie. Uh, the mouth is definitely more textured as well versus, say, the original Shredder from what, the late, was it the early 90s, late 80s, late 80s movie, the original Turtles movie, where you just had slits in his mouth, mouth plate here, where you could see the mouth underneath talking. This definitely has a more, it almost has like an, a robotic insect look to it, where, I don't know if this was their intention, but the Shredders, it almost looks like he's got like teeth, like serrated teeth on the front of his plate, just giving him really that menacing look. He has a really, he has a good presence, I think, to him on the side, even like the side profile of Shredder. He has a really neat presence to him. But you can see, though, how he has a more industrial design to him. Like there's all these little pistons and like little gears where it looks like it's it's all like, factory developed versus something like as the original shredder would have been probably something that he crafted on his own this has more of a mechanized look to it uh, taking the cape back off just i'm going to show you guys the back here taking this off and this is a nice pliable rubber too which is a nice added touch but on the back there you can see again it just looks more like armor or for that matter again robotic Shredder's articulation has actually quite a bit of articulation. His head does rotate left and right. Not really up and down, but more so just left and right. Uh, his shoulders, shoulder uh, blades, you want to call it little shoulder plate blades here, they lift up because it does allow the arms to get a little extra clearance, especially when moving the arms up like this. Uh, the shoulders are on hinges. You can't move the arms too far out because, I mean, a lot of the sections right here kind of start butting up against the inside of the, the torso here. He does still have a hinge in the elbow. No swivel or anything like that in the forearm. But a lot of the swivel you can rely on the shoulder socket, not so much from the arm. So you're still not limited by the fact that you can't rotate the forearm. Uh, he does have what appears to be a swivel in the wrist. Which is funny enough that he has the swivel in the wrist, but the turtles didn't. And uh, I don't know if, again, because they had the sculpting in the, the bands and everything around their wrists that they didn't want to break that up with the articulation in the wrist, but Shredder does have the swivel in the wrist. Shredder also does have a swivel in the waist. And then when it gets to his legs, I'll just move this up for a second here, the Shredder's on one singular hinge. You can move the leg back and forth, but if you rotate it like so, it allows the leg to move out the other way as well. For that same logic, he does have a swivel in the thigh, a single bend in the knee, and a hinged foot. For your scale comparison, I'll just put Shredder right there. 
get him to stand. We'll reach off camera. We'll bring in his nemesis. I say nemesis. I don't really even know how these two are connected to one another. Maybe a Montayoshi and a Rokosaki do have a history together. Uh, still, we, we aren't certain until, again, the movie is released. Then also reaching off camera, we have, say, the likes of Leonardo. Still, sh still shorter versus Shredder. We have little small Mikey, which again is probably about two thirds the height of the Shredder. And taking the tallest turtle and the biggest turtle, uh, Raphael still is shorter as well. Just moving the other way. Raphael is also still shorter than the Shredder. So Shredder is, as he should be, taller than the other turtles, which is a good way. I'm glad they at least that, you know, they made him taller. Putting this to the side. Uh, I'm also going to be curious to see if we're going to get uh, post-movie toys, because sometimes when you get pre-movie stuff, especially like some of the Turtles, a lot of it is conceptual. You know, they, they, they take to market, you know, the studios go to the toy companies, respected toy companies, and a lot of times they give them the conceptual designs. They basically say, okay, this is what we've got planned for the individual Turtles, this is what we have planned for Shredder, and then a lot of toy companies... Uh, immediately start producing material for the movies. Uh, it's, it allows them the opportunity between the mold casting, the production, the packaging, and the advertising, it allows them a chance to get the toys to market and to retail uh, as the movie is coming out, or a lot of times before the movie is coming out. The reason why I say that, though, is, again, because Shredder, we're not quite certain how he's going to appear in the movie and to what form he's going to appear in the movie, that perhaps this was either an early concept for the original Shredder or, again, Playmates is trying to uh, trying to keep the identity of the, the Shredder a mystery until the movie comes out, and then maybe afterwards we're going to get a post-Shredder. But I like the design of him. I really like the design of Shredder. He's an updated take to the original core character of the Shredder. For that, I'm going to give the Shredder an 8. An 8 for the Shredder. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the Playmates toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, movie figures. We were having a look today at the Shredder. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more Toy Spots anyway, and we're going to have a look at more of the Turtles movie property figures as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.